and we say good morning to our television family. Here we are again. It's good to see you. It is the seventh day of September 2022. I am Dan Kuntz, and according to my calendar, and I use the Gregorian calendar, it's Wednesday. Yeah, the theme to Winning Wednesday, as performed by Grammy Award-winning singer Pink. Bet you didn't know that. Winning Wednesday is back because it's Wednesday, and i got to give something away. And today, Desert Canyon. Yeah, i got a $150 gift card. $150 gift card to Desert Canyon. So it's got an estimated retail value of $150. You can use it at Desert Canyon, a little food, some golf balls, some golf. I don't care. It's all yours. Desert Canyon, 150 bucks on a gift card. You want it? You gotta enter. Because if you don't enter the contest, you can't win the contest. So get your emails in. Winner at ncwlife.com. Winner at ncwlife.com. That's how you enter. Email winner at ncwlife.com. And if you're a regular viewer of the show, you know the rules by now. And if you're not a regular viewer of the show, what's the matter with you? Um, one entry per email address. You can't enter continuously over and over and over again on the same email address. Uh, we do keep track of these things. Uh, number two, employees of local telecommunications solely on broadcasting and their immediate families are not eligible. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> if you don't enter, you can't win. $150 gift card. You can buy golf balls. Uh, you can go golfing, and get something to eat, I, it doesn't matter to me. $150 gift card from our friends at the Desert Canyon Golf Resort in beautiful Aranda, Washington. I'll give you a couple more reminders before the show is over and we'll do the drawing via Facebook Live a little bit later on today. Big, big weather change is coming our way. We're, gonna, we're in for about 36 hours of some pretty crazy stuff. Looks kind of quiet outside right now, a little smoky, a little hazy. Few high clouds, very calm. Boy, that's going to change. Going to be very windy today. Hold on to your hats. We're going to get some serious wind this afternoon and tonight as a rather robust cold front slides in late this afternoon into the evening hours. Very windy, very low relative humidity. The relative humidity is going to be lower than a gopher's basement and warm temperatures. Red flag warning. All day today. Details coming up. And you folks to the north of us, uh, Waterville, that area, uh, the Highway 2 corridor. Mansfield, that area, windy and blowing dust, bad combination there. We'll uh, let you know what kind of news you need to know to get your day going. Sports, the Mariners keep right on winning. Knocked off the White Sox, they only got six hits, but it was enough. Shut out the Chai Sox, 3 nothing. highlights of that. Plus, we'll have some high school s scores for you to pass along. And uh, in case you missed the interview a couple of weeks ago, and if you did, what happened there? Uh, my conversation with Dr. Andrew Jones, who's the new CEO, the Chief Executive Officer of Confluence Health. It's a big job. It's an important job. He has taken to it quite well. Dr. Andrew Jones, the head guy at Confluence Health, will be my guest in the back half of the program. 63 degrees, wind out of the northwest at 13 miles an hour. It's going to be a lot windier than that before this day is over at four minutes after the hour. Let's start our tour and we'll begin, begin with the jump off ridge camera. You can see a little bit of haze, not as bad as it has been, but I want to give you a quick heads up on the air quality. Right now in Leavenworth, closest to the Irving Peak and White River fires, they're at 52 on the air monitoring scale. That is moderate, uh, but the worst air that I can see right now is cashmere, and this is they're prone to happen in cashmere. Your air quality in cashmere, you're at 73, still moderate, but uh, kind of sneaking up towards unhealthy for sensitive groups. Here in the valley proper, we're at 31 which means the weather, the, uh, the, the air quality is good. Um, serious wind today though, so yikes. Hopefully, so far it's been pretty good news on the White River and Irving Peak Fire. In fact, we'll give you an update during the news. Camera two. Off to Lake Chelan we go, gonna be windy up there. That looks to be the lower Butte camera, is that correct? Lower Butte camera, say hello to the Three Fingers. That project continues, the Sunset Marina. Say hi to the Evans boys. Good to see you. Uh, and uh, Chelan proper from the lower Butte camera looking over Chelan. We got a couple of cameras there, that one and the one at the very tip top of the Butte. Camera three will take us to, looks to be number one Canyon camera in Wenatchee. 
Beautiful sunrise. By the way, this is the last day of 13-hour days. Sunrise this morning was at 628. Sunset tonight will be at 729. That is 13 hours and one minute of daylight. We go, go below the 13-hour mark starting tomorrow, and then we do a rapid loss of daylight all the way to the autumnal equinox on Thursday the 21st. It's not too far off. And camera number four. That looks to be up to the Lake Wenatchee area. Is that correct, Uriah? Yep, they're just kind of sitting there letting it go, the fire there. Uh, the fires, I should say. In fact, the White River fire was the original larger fire. Now the Irving Peak fire is actually bigger, but it's difficult terrain, so they're just going to kind of, you know, just let it go. There's not a lot they can do. It's hard to fight a fire when you have like a 70 degree incline. It kind of makes things a little difficult. So they're containing it as best they can, but it's pretty smoky and hazy up there. Red flag warnings stink. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't like them, but they are what they are. From 8 o'clock this morning till 10 o'clock tonight, we get the whole nine yards. Uh, you got um, very, very low relative humidity. I mean, way down there. will be uh, about 15, 12 to 15 percent in relative humidity. That is bone dry. Winds, lots of it, especially this afternoon right up until sunset, and temperatures will still be plenty warm. We hit 86 yesterday. We'll be uh, right around there today. So the red flag warning uh, pretty much for all of eastern Washington, all of it because of this uh, rather dry and powerful cold front. Not gonna last very long. Uh, it's gonna come in, it's gonna go out, but while it's here, it's not gonna be particularly fun. And watch out for blowing dust uh, and reduced visibility along the Waterville Plateau. We have a slide to show you there about blowing dust. Now you're gonna see a photo uh, that's not the Waterville Plateau. It's just a photo. Um, that, that mountain there that you see is not in Waterville. But uh, areas of blowing dust, a distinct possibility along the Highway 2 corridor, all the way from Morondo up the uh, Pine Valley into Waterville and right along Highway 2 uh, with, uh, with blowing dust. So it could get a little nasty visibility-wise if you're driving in that area to the north of us. And also maybe a little bit out in the Columbia Basin too. Can't rule that out because of course they're, they're plowing fields and that loosens up the soil. So gonna be kind of a crazy day over the next 36 hours from the National Weather Service. Uh, we'll have some increasing clouds as the day progresses. Uh, this morning, not a lot of wind. By the time we get to noon, it'll be oh, northwest wind about 12 to 17 miles an hour. Winds gusting near 30 at times today. And it's going to be windy pretty much overnight until we get to sunrise tomorrow. So still patchy blowing dust possible. Clear skies, breezy, a little cool, 54. But the overnight low, it's going to feel cool. Now our normal overnight low is 56, so it's going to be right around normal. But it's been a very mild last couple of weeks. Sunshine, fairly calm on Thursday with a high of 83. Told you it was a cold front, so it's bringing in colder air. We'll be lucky to get to 81 on Friday, which is right around normal. Little wind on Friday night. Then we're in for a nice, pleasant stretch. Uh, starting Saturday, lots of sunshine, mild temperatures, high of 87. We'll be back up into the 90s again on Sunday and Monday. That might be it for the 90s Monday of next week before we cool down again and it starts to feel a little more autumnal. Again, the big story today, the red flag warning, very low relative humidities, strong winds with a robust cold front coming in and still plenty warm. Get ready for some very windy conditions this afternoon. It's nine minutes after the hour. Come right back and see me in one minute. We'll have your headlines on this Wednesday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. This could be the view out of your office window. North Central Washington is probably one of the most beautiful places to live and you get to experience it all as a transit operator. Link Transit coach operators enjoy full family benefits, paid CDL training, a state-of-the-art fleet, and the satisfaction of being part of a progressive, community-minded team. We have a lot of fun with each other. I mean, it's a good group of people. We're all kind of like a family. If you like this view, Link has a seat for you. The next operator training starts soon. Apply today at linktransit.com. Thank you. 
Smoky, hazy, 10 minutes after the hour. We're sitting at 63 degrees. Red flag warning begins at 8 o'clock this morning, goes all the way to the rest of the day and into the evening hours. Strong winds this afternoon into the evening hours. Uh, low, and I mean very low, relative humidity and warm temperatures. Let's see if we can get through this day unscathed. We begin with this very sad story. An identified woman uh, is dead after a condominium fire. This happened yesterday morning in East Wenatchee. Douglas County Fire District 2 and Chelan County Fire District 1 responding at about 10.30 yesterday morning to the fire. It was at the Stone Ridge Condos. That's in the 1400 block of East Wine Avenue. A caller reported seeing flames coming from that home. Kay McKellar is the fire district spokeswoman. Said the fire was on the second floor of the unit. Firefighters, after being told there was a family member inside, reached the deceased woman. At 1039, the Douglas County Coroner is investigating the woman's cause of death, and the county fire marshal is investigating the cause of the fire. Firefighters cleared the scene by about a quarter afternoon uh, on yesterday. A man and two women were arrested Monday evening after thefts from a store led to a high-speed chase through Tenasket. Ended up with the suspects crashing into the fruit bins that you see there, and then the driver jumped into the Okanagan River. The Okanagan County Sheriff's Office said deputies attempted to stop a Ford F-250 pickup at about 5.40 Monday night in con connection with thefts from Buyer's Market in Tenasket. Well, the driver refused to stop but drove into a dead end. The Sheriff's Office said the vehicle then turned around, drove directly at Deputy Preston Ray's patrol vehicle. Ray was able to accelerate, swerve away, did not collide with the suspect's car, but because of the alleged attempted assault, Pursuit of the pickup was authorized, and the trooper chased the suspects through Tenasket, traveling at speeds of up to 45 miles an hour before the pickup crashed into a stack of fruit bins. A man and two women fled on foot. The sheriff's office said Ray quickly apprehended the woman, but the man ran into the Okanagan River. Now, with assistance from the Tenasket Fire Department boat, deputies captured 33-year-old Jory Valley of Nespilum. He was booked into the Okanagan County Jail on charges of attempted first-degree assault, attempt to elude, obstructing a public servant, and third-degree theft. Also jailed on charges of third-degree theft and obstructing a public servant. Two women in the car, 25-year-old Kelby Smith of OMAC and 19-year-old Creona Smith of OMAC. We have more information on that story we first brought you yesterday. Grant County Sheriff's deputies continue to investigate that fatal collision. A 38-year-old Quincy man dying in the 20,000 block of Road 6 Northwest. This happened southwest of Quincy on Labor Day afternoon. A 2019 Dodge Challenger eastbound on Road 6 at a high speed. Apparently it left the road to the north, struck a utility pole, struck a vehicle parked in front of a home, and then rolled and struck a parked flatbed trailer. The driver, Eduardo Diaz Magna, partially ejected from the Challenger, was pronounced dead at the scene. A passenger in the vehicle, Magna's brother, 36-year-old Noel Diaz Magna of Arizona, was treated and released from Quincy Valley Medical Center for a head injury. The collision first reported again at about 3.30 on Monday afternoon. Investigators in the last week's Union Valley fire in the hills between Chelan and Manson are asking for information on a vehicle that was seen traveling in the area right around the time the fire started. Chelan County Emergency Management and Department of Natural Resources investigators, they want to talk to the driver of a dark colored SUV that was traveling up Union Valley Road at about two o'clock last Monday. That was the day of the fire. The fire was first reported at 12, at 2.10 p.m. as several small fires. It apparently later merged into one fire that burned an estimated 20 acres. DNR had asked earlier that residents of the area contact them if they have security cameras that face Union Valley Road. The Forest Service said yesterday that its strategy of allowing the fires above the Lake Wenatchee area, the White River and Irving Peak fires, to smolder is both safe and effective. The White River and Irving Peak fires have been burning uh, since August 11th, a combined 4,540 acres so far. Now, because of the terrain, it's difficult. Uh, the firefighters have focused on building a containment perimeter. They're using roads and hand lines in addition to air resources. The Irving Peak Fire has burned more than 3,000 acres. It's 7% contained. The White River Fire, just over 1,500 acres at 1% contained. And again, there is a red flag warning today with strong winds all over the area. So we'll see what that does to both the smoke and the fire. We'll keep a close eye on that. And finally, 
This story stinks. One lane of Highway 28 east of Soap Lake closed for several hours Tuesday after a semi hauling manure crashed while trying to avoid dogs on the roadway. Washington State Patrol Trooper Jeremy Weber said the driver of the semi suffered minor injuries in the accident. Happened shortly afternoon, about two miles outside of Soap Lake. Manure from the semi spilled into a ditch containing runoff water, and that brought in State Department of Ecology officials. Probably didn't smell particularly good either. That's what's making news at 16 minutes after the hour on this winning Wednesday. We're pretty much back to full strength. Eric is back from vacation. Eric will handle sports. Grant with the weather and the news with a preview. Here's Grant. Good morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, a popular trailhead north of Winthrop will be closed for renovations next week. We'll tell you for how long. A red flag warning is in place for today with windy and dry conditions expected. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. And in sports, Eric Granstrom, back from vacation, has the latest on the Mariners' White Sox series as well as the Seahawks, who are preparing for Russell Wilson's return to Seattle on Monday night. That and all the day's news stories coming your way tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope to see you then. Dan? I watch the news every night, even though I take part in putting it together. Anyway, I do it. We invite you to do it, too, at 5, 6, and 10. And of course, you can also watch it on our Facebook page and on our homepage, so you're not locked into those times. You can watch the news. If you have access to the World Wide Web, you can watch the news whenever you want. And at the bottom of the page, you can get a hold of us whenever you want, except the phone number. We're, you know, we, we do close the office occasionally. But as far as emailing, Facebook, and going to our website, those are the tools that are available for you if you want to say hi. After a quick break, Mariners didn't get a lot of hits, but they got enough. They beat the White Sox. Highlights in one minute. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Happy summer days from Collins Fashions. We have what you need to stay cool and be ready for your casual and dressy events. Sundresses and cotton and linen. Semi-formal dresses from Joseph, Lyman, and Alex. Swimwear and shorts, capris, tees for your casual days and fall and winter vacations. Summer footwear from Soft, Jambu, Fly London, and Bueno. Come check out Tommy Bahama for men and women. Brighton handbags and jewelry and sunglasses add to your glam for summer. Come visit Collins where fun meets fashion in downtown Wenatchee. We were in Roseburg in the early 80s. Our oldest son, Dan, was a defensive back, a starter on that team. They set, in fact, became Oregon State champions, setting the first undefeated 14-0 season in Oregon's history. And our kids still talk about that. I go back now, too, and I think about all those great days and great times. The neat thing is that we can go back in today and still enjoy the same quality food that we enjoyed 50 years ago. That's legendary. About 19 minutes after the hour, the Mariners keep finding different ways to win, and they did it again last night. Knocked off the White Sox. Finally, it was three zip. The Mariners had just six hits in the ball game, but they leaned on second-year pitcher Logan Gilbert to hold Chicago in check. They scratched out an under run in the fifth. Gilbert at the bullpen held up their end of the bargain. Cal Raleigh, thank you very much, did his job too. Here are your highlights. Swing and a miss at the top of the zone. You don't see many cuts like that from Jose Abreu. 98 top shelf. Around the corner. I see one Dan Wilson in the hallway. Swing and a miss for strike three. Last few starts. Swing and a miss. Gavin Sheets well in front of the warning track. France is on his way. Motor into third base. And France is in there safe. It gets past Cueto. Does not go in the camera. No, they're little. saying it did. Oh, how about well, that umpire? Well, Grandal is saying, uh-uh-uh, it came back on the field. It must have gone in and then come back out. I'm not sure because it looked like it bounced up, hit the top railing on the pad, and kicked it out. And he may have thought maybe it hit the camera or something. Well, this is a new one. Yeah. It'll be Valentine. Oh, how about that one? Corkscrew Robert into the ground in slow motion. 
Swing and a tick foul back. That slider. Yeah, when, when the crowd is into the game, it's it's you're playing for a lot. Everything's on the line every night. Yeah. One, two. Swing and a foul tip at 99. Gilbert's one, two. The 0-2. Julio comes in. Julio makes the catch. And the Mariners win. They blank the White Sox and they even the series. But Logan Gilbert going to six strong. Did not allow anything at all to work by the bullpen again, Danny. And then Cal Raleigh, what can you say, his 23rd home run of the year at a crucial time in this ball game. No doubt about it. Made that ninth inning so much easier. Credit the Mariner offense for get, finding a way to score on Johnny Cueto, who threw the ball very well for the White Sox. Logan Gilbert wins his 12th game of the season, six shutout innings. But despite all that, Scott Service after the game said, Logan Gilbert really wasn't that sharp. He goes six shutout innings and strikes out nine guys. And um, it wasn't uh, Logan at his best. I, it's crazy to say that. But uh, you know, his stuff was, was really good. But the command, I just thought his timing was a little off tonight. We saw more. Um, non-competitive pitches than we see from Logan on any normal night, and he knew it. Uh, it was a struggle uh, every inning to try to get some some rhythm going and the timing going in his delivery. I say all that, and again, he figured out a way to get through uh, the first and third there in the sixth with one out with a couple punch outs, and uh, great to see that emotion from him. Uh, he knew it was a rough night. It was a battle every inning, and to get through it, not giving up anything uh, was just awesome, and in our bullpen again, uh, it was not easy tonight. There was a whole lot of one, two, three innings until the ninth. Uh, Cal Raleigh, big caught stealing uh, throw out there to help out Matt Brash. Uh, Mooney uh, wasn't easy for him tonight uh, either. So um, you know the White Sox are they're fighting for some stuff over there too, trying to get back in that race in the Central. Um, so big win. Um, you know offensively, not a lot to write home about. I thought you know Ty gets a double, really good at bat by Mitch. You know, we, we force uh, a ball getting by the third baseman, you know, by Ty tagging up. And then, you know, really good at bat by Hagerty late. And Cal finishes it off with a home run. So not a lot to write home about offensively, but just enough. Um, and homers at the right time can really make a difference. So. Mariners and the White Sox play their rubber game in the three-game series. It's a matinee, 110. First pitch on Root Sports Northwest. All right, to the American League West scoreboard from our friends at Les Schwab. A basis loaded walk in the seventh was the difference. The Rangers topped Houston 4 to 3. Framber Valdez taking the loss for the Astros. He pitched well. He struck out 11 over six and two thirds, but you can't win them all. Detroit showed some shoddy defense in the bottom of the 10th inning. They allowed two runs and a walk off win over the Angels. The final was 5 to 4. And despite home runs by Sean Murphy, Seth Brown, and Chad Pinder, Oakland losing to the Braves 10 to 9. The Braves pushed across what proved to be the winning run in the sixth inning on a sacrifice fly by. Austin Riley, by the way. Atlanta heading to Seattle soon. To the wild card we go. Seattle remains tied with Tampa Bay for the top of the American League wild card spot. The Rays dispatched Boston 8 to 4. Baltimore beat Toronto 9 to 6. The Blue Jays hold down the third wild card spot. The three and a half games in front of the Orioles. The Twins of the Yankees rained out in the beautiful Bronx last night. They'll make it up today as part of a day night double hitter. Slow start in the second half spelled doom for the Seattle Storm. They were eliminated from the WNBA playoffs. Las Vegas got the better of them, 97 to 92. Seattle held a four point lead at the half, but they came out and scored just 12 points in the third quarter. The Aces grabbing a six point lead heading into the final quarter, and that was about it. Brianna Stewart led the way for the Storm. She had 42 points. Jewel Lloyd had 19. Las Vegas moves on to the WNBA finals against the winner of Connecticut and New York. Last night's elimination for the Storm also means, of course, the end of Sue Bird's incredible 21 year career. She brought Seattle four WNBA titles and is the all-time leader in assists. The high school fall sports season has been underway now for a couple of weeks. Here are your scores from last night on the pitch. 
The Branchy girls traveled to Skyline, lost 4 0. Eastmont blamed Cashmere 2 0. The newly nicknamed Moses Lake Warriors traveled to Lewis and Clark, probably wish they hadn't. They lost 8 1. Sela blamed Cascade in soccer. Chelan topped Cleelum. Uh, Tenasket over Omac 11 0. And Okanagan eased by Afreda 3 1. Busy night in the volleyball courts. Wenatchee blanking Central Valley 3 zip. Chelan shutting out Eastmont. Three games to none. Moses Lake took care of, uh, Lewis and Clark took care of Moses Lake. In fact, they're all 3 nothings, as you see there. Everybody won three sets to none, including Almira Cooley Hartline, Simon Garfunkel over Waterville, Mansfield, Loggins, and Messina. And those are just some of the games that people are playing at 26 minutes after the hour. Five obscure holidays I could have chosen today. I could have chosen National Grandma Moses Day as to celebrate people who accomplish great things at an advanced age. Today is National Grateful Patient Day. Today is National Salami Day. Today is National Acorn Squash Day, but no, today is National Beer Lovers Day. Mmm, beer. It's actually two days we celebrate beer. One is National Beer Day and one is National Beer Lovers Day. If there's a National Beer Haters Day, I don't know of it. Beer goes back about 6,000 years. 6,000 years they've been brewing beer. That's a long time. Uh, if you want, want a really strong beer, try the Snake Venom. It's the strongest beer in the world. Alcohol content of Snake Venom beer, 67.5% alcohol. Wow. Uh, there's a museum in Germany dedicated to nothing but beer making and the history of beer making. Anheuser-Busch, the largest beer producer in the world, not even close, they're huge. They own, Anheuser-Busch alone, owns 400 different brands of beer worldwide. That's pretty darn impressive. And the oldest brewer in the world, still making beer, is in Wiestenfaten, Germany. Goes back to 1040 AD. If you have a beer from there that's about 4,000 years old, you will probably become violently ill. Do a little pub crawling today. It's National Beer Lover's Day. Good day to try a beer you've never tried. If you like beer, but you know, I don't know, today's your day. Except for that snake venom beer. Better get an Uber driver for that. 68% alcohol in beer? Cool, baby. 28 minutes after the hour. Day in history, Eugene Lefevre. There he is. He had to be the first. Somebody's got to be the first. And Eugene Lefevre became the first to do this on September 7th, 1909 in a Wright-built airplane right outside of Paris, France. He was flying it around. Eugene Lefevre was. Plane crashed. Eugene died. Eugene Lefevre becoming the first pilot ever to die in an airplane crash powered by an engine. There was one previous crash before on an engine-powered airplane, but the passenger died, not the pilot. Eugene Lefevre became the first pilot to die in an airplane crash 113 years ago today. Uh, whatever happened to the Miss America pageant? It's kind of, kind of fallen off the American cultural map, and I don't have any problem with that. 101 years ago today, the very first Miss America pageant was held in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, it took two days to do it. And it came down to the two finalists, Virginia Lee and Margaret Gorman. And then there was a conflict. The judges discovered that Virginia Lee was 22 years old, which is apparently too old. Uh, she was a professional beauty queen, not an amateur. And she was married. And Virginia Lee was also a personal friend of one of the judges. All of those things should have disqualified her. It didn't matter. She didn't win anyway. The winner from Washington, D.C., Miss Washington, D.C., 16-year-old Margaret Gorman. She was crowned the Golden Mermaid. That's the crown she wore, and she got 100 bucks cash. And uh, Margaret Gorman spent the rest of her long, long life trying to dis disassociate herself from the Miss America pageant. She said it was silly then, and it's silly now. Happy birthday to the Miss America pageant. And the Blitz, 87 years ago, 82 years ago today, 82 years ago today, September 7th, uh, 1940, the German Luftwaffel begins to bomb the bejesus out of London. Um, it started on the 7th day of September 1940. They didn't stop 
for, well, 56 of the following 57 nights, they bombed London. They did day bombing and night bombing, and they just bombed and bombed and bombed London. London survived. The RAF did their part. Not fun. Bottom of the hour, birthdays, two innovators. One, Paul Brown, born in the state 1908, the legendary football coach. The Cleveland Browns are named after Paul Brown. How many teams of any kind anywhere are named after their coach? That's the only one I know of. Paul Brown, the first coach to scout opponents, the first coach to film games and study game films to find out weaknesses for both their team. He was the first coach to hire a full-time paid staff of assistants. He was the first coach to have not only a playbook, but he would test their players on their knowledge of the playbook. Paul Brown invented the face mask. He invented the practice squad. He invented the draw play. He wasn't a particularly likable guy. He was a coach, and football coaches tend to be dictatorial, but he did a lot of things right that people still use in football today. Paul Brown, born in the state in 1908. Charles Harden Holly, Buddy Holly. Would have been 86 years old today, born September 7th, 1936 in Lubbock, Texas. He had three older brothers and sisters who came really close together. And then seven and a half years, and then Charles was born. And because he was so much younger than his three older siblings, he got the nickname Buddy, the man who invented the rock and roll band, the self-contained rock and roll unit. Two guitars, bass, drums, writing, arranging, performing, producing their own material. He did it first. His music is everywhere. Even if you don't even know it, it's in there. Little bits and pieces. My favorite, Buddy Holly. It's Winning Wednesday. Have I mentioned that already? You, oops. You see this gift card from Desert Canyon? Got 150 bucks on it. Let me look. Yep. $150 gift card from our friends at Desert Canyon. Up here in beautiful Orlando, you can use it in the grill, you can use it for golf, you can use it for golf balls, merchandise, I don't care. Doesn't matter to me. Winner at ncwlife.com. Get in your emails. Winner at ncwlife.com. Winner at ncwlife.com. If you want a $150 gift card from our friends at Desert Canyon, I'll give you one more reminder before this award-winning program is over. Going to take a break. Got an opinion from Mike Mad Dog Minotti. And in case you missed it, we're going to replay the interview I did with Dr. Andrew Jones, who is the head honcho of the Big Cheese, El Numero Uno. Uriah is drinking his coffee in my earpiece. He is the CEO of Confluence Health, Andrew Jones. My interview with him coming up. You're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley on the NCW Life Channel. With all the variety on SureStream TV from Localtel, there's always something to watch. But what if you hit the couch in the middle of all the shows? That's a perfect time to use the features catch up or restart catch up on shows from up to three days ago or restart your show from the beginning go to your guide and select the show to restart then play pause rewind on your schedule don't forget sure stream tv from local tell lets you decide when shows begin some thought it would never happen the supreme court taking away a woman's right to choose a right to privacy that existed for almost 50 years it's extreme and dangerous. Now some DC politicians want to ban all abortions with no exceptions for rape, incest, or the life of the mother. As a doctor and mother, I am outraged. As your congresswoman, I won't stand for it. I'm Kim Schreier and I approve this message because this fight is now. When you call Dixie Heating and Air Conditioning, you're calling on 35 plus years of experience in the Wenatchee Valley. Spending extra time in your home, you may have discovered an unwanted aroma. Stinky feet, pets, who knows what. Call Dix today about installing their Train Clean Effects Electronic Air Cleaner or a Ream Halo Ultraviolet Air Purifier. Either way, the air quality in your home will be improved. Proudly servicing all of North Central Washington, call 884-6444 today. If you could live anywhere, where would it be? And what would it be like? With today's home values, this is the perfect time to sell and make those dreams real. When you work with a world-class agent at Coldwell Banker, you benefit from trusted guidance in our revolutionary seller's assurance program. 
to make your home sale more rewarding than ever. So it really is true. Your dreams don't have to be just dreams. At Washington Trust Bank, can't is a four-letter word. I think we should hire more people. Talk. Late for a meeting. Hey, we need to build a home office. We We're adding another bathroom. We need a warehouse. I can't imagine how we do that. We believe you can do whatever you set your mind to, and we'll help you get there. Washington Trust Bank. Privately owned. Locally invested. The newest generation of GMC Sierra pickups offer the most advanced technology, the strongest selection of powertrain, and everything else you need to work hard, play hard, and explore the boundaries of the Wenatchee Valley and beyond. Take a look at the latest, most luxurious and durable trucks on the market. You will see why GMC is not your grandfather's pickup. You want to bet, kid? Hi folks, welcome to Save Mart. How can we help you today? Uh, we're looking for a recliner. Okay, right this way. Go ahead and move this chase on the other side. Great, I want that one. I would like that one. That's a great choice. And I want this one as well. Okay. And I definitely want this one. Ooh. You find it at Save Mart. Full service at a low, low price. Hey, this is Mike Mad Dog McNaughty, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, retail businesses, you know, if you're not doing too well, here's a tip. I believe the concept of retail is that a business wants people to come into said business and exchange their money that they have in their pockets for the merchandise the business has on its shelves. Okay, fine. But there's an important part. This exchange occurs at something called a checkout stand or a cash register. Now, this is the point, right? A customer takes your stuff and gives you money. Now, wouldn't it therefore make a whole lot of sense to actually have sufficient people, sufficient number of employees at this place where this exchange is supposed to take place so the potential transactions can actually occur? That Doesn't that make sense? Don't you wish that these transactions could occur within a reasonable period of time? I mean, come on, in my limited perspective, that's what I think is a good idea. Now, now maybe consider it. Have people at your check stands. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. <laughs> Transform your windows with a variety of colors and styles like the Allure Transitional Window Covering by Lafayette Interior Fashions. Hi, this is Darren with Mini Blinds and More. We can install the latest and greatest in technology to open and close your blinds with only a touch of a button. From the largest windows in your home to room darkening shades for the bedroom. From stylish shades for your entertainment room to custom blinds for those hard to fit places. We have a solution for all of your window covering needs. We offer a variety of window coverings from Lafayette Interior Fashions. Call us today. We are Mini Blinds and More, your local blind store. I'm Brian Thorpe, and I'm proud to say that Global Car Care is growing. We always do the right thing, and because of that, we're busy, and it's time to hire an experienced automotive technician. We spend as much time with our coworkers as we do our own family. I want them to understand they're not a number here. They're a person with a family, and I want them to be part of this family too. Do you want an owner that understands and respects what you do every day? I'm that guy. Our compensation is the best in the area. I want you to have your career with us. DNL Army Surplus in Wenatchee is stocked with items for the whole family. From ammo to collectibles and so much more, DNL Army Surplus, your one stop shop for military surplus, survival, camping, and tactical gear. Bring the whole family and stop on by today. Connect with us on Networked as we introduce you to the people and organizations who are leading innovation in the region. Get inspired, engaged, and networked. 
right here on the NCW Life Channel. I'm here at Boswell's Home Furnishings to announce one of their newest lines of furniture, Biltwell, an amazing local furniture maker in Oregon. Hi, can I help you? I was just telling my friends. About Biltwell? They have exquisite craftsmanship, superior construction. I love their designs. Biltwell is a great addition to the wide selection of quality furniture you'll find here at Boswell's. Boswell's Furniture on Easy Street. It's closer than you think. Welcome to Bubbly by Cake Chick, where friends come to relax and reconnect. Enjoy delicious lunches, decadent desserts, classic champagne, and bourbon tastings. Make every day an occasion when you join friends at Bubbly by Cake Chick on Riverside Drive in Wenatchee. I'm John Divis from Wenatchee Dental Arts, and I like to think myself as a comprehensive dentist. We are an office that treats people comprehensively for their dental problems. We do a lot of general dentistry in a broad sense. We don't send everything out. Uh, things that we have the ability to do in the office, we like to keep in the office and under one roof and keep things as complication-free as possible. You can come to one place and have all their dental needs taken care of. Welcome back to Wake Up in Anche Valley. We're at the beautiful campus of uh, Central Washington Hospital. It took some, some doing, but we finally have a chance to sit down and talk to the newly uh, hired chief executive officer. He took over in May from the now retired Dr. Peter Rutherford. Peter Rutherford uh, had the top job here for a decade, did it quite well. Andrew Jones, uh, Dr. Andrew Jones is joining me. Uh, welcome to the Valley and thanks for uh, taking some time out from, I know it's been a very busy few uh, months for you. It has and uh, I'm delighted to be here. A um, little bit about yourself, you know, this isn't a job interview, but give us a little, little sure. background uh, on Dr. Jones. Yeah, so I'm happy to. Uh, I'm, I'm originally from a smallish town in northeastern Oklahoma called Bartlesville, uh, which probably no one's ever heard of. Uh, and my, my dad worked for Phillips 66, an uh, oil and gas company, and the youngest of four brothers, one of whom lives in Portland, actually. Uh, but they live all over the country. Uh, grew up as a sort of a science nerd and a musician and a swimmer and didn't quite know what I was going to do with myself. Went off to college thinking I was going to be a, a researcher because my brothers are, uh, two of them have PhDs and one's in education. I thought I was going to be a scientist and I wound up majoring in history in college and got very interested in sort of the history of epidemic diseases. So even before the, you know, COVID, um, epidemic diseases had a very interesting impact on the world, you know, cholera and the plague and all that sort of stuff. So I studied that. Um, spent a couple years working in Connecticut, then uh, went to medical school and did my residency and a good bit of time in Oklahoma. Uh, I had a sort of first career in, in, in medical education. So I taught medical students and medical residents and was a residency program director in Denver for a number of years, including running a, sort of a big clinic there that took care of underserved folks. Um, during that time, I went to business school because I wanted to learn how to run the clinic better to make better use of the resources we had and got uh, pretty interested in how things work, uh, how to make an organization work well, how to lead people. Um, spent a couple of years doing essentially internal consulting with a, with a big health system, uh, on process improvement. And then for the last five and a half years, I've been at Grand Junction, Colorado at St. Mary's Medical Center, which is a lot like Confluence, really. It's a town of about 65,000 people at the confluence of two rivers. It just happens to be the Colorado and the Gunnison, um, not the Wenatchee and the Columbia. Um, and very similar, you know, geography and, 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 and uh, culture and all that. I mean, in fact, a buddy of mine who is a, a peach farmer there is a peach orchard. He got his trees from someone in Wenatchee, of all places. Wow. So, um, so yeah, that's how I, how I came to it's kind of how I got to be here, uh, and that's a little background on me. It sounds like uh, in the Jones family with the siblings, uh, a lot of accomplishment going on there. Was that a lot of that growing up, trying to outdo your, your, uh, your siblings well, in that? Because it sounds like they've all, they've all done well for themselves. We, they have. Um, I'm the youngest by far, so I'm 17 years younger than my youngest brother. Uh, so when, when I was born, my youngest brother was in Vietnam, you know, a non-tourist situation. Um, 
And so I was really, they're, I mean, they're really more like my uncles and my brothers in some extent, to some extent, I didn't know the, it was, I didn't know the difference. Uh, but yeah, my, 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 my father was the first person in his family to go to college. And I was somehow encouraged in an unspoken way that we were all going to, you know, make something of ourselves and go to school and study hard. And, and uh, so, yeah. And you did. And I did. <laughs> the, um, the, 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 the Confluence Health people, at one point or another, the board of directors got a hold of you. But there was some processes that happened sure. before that in the vetting process. At what point did you and Confluence Health kind of end up on each other's radar mm -hmm. and walk me through that process. Yeah, sure. So uh, as is typical when they're trying to hire s these kinds of roles, um, they engaged a, a, what's called a search firm to sort of find the next executive for Confluence Health. Um, and this firm, they've, you know, they put postings in various places that people like me might see. And uh, I was kind of trying to figure out what the, what, you know, what, might be next for me or, or what have you, what would be a good place for my family. And I saw this, this you know, what's this Wenatchee business? You know, like, like what's, what's up with this thing? And I sort of, one thing led to another and talked to the recruiter and learned about this awesome place and these cool, cool people and the real opportunity to build something cool for the community and for the folks who live here and for the patients too. Uh, and so that's sort of how that process works. And then you, know, you go, you work with the recruiter and then you talk to the, the board chair and you kind of work through the various stages of that through interviews and what have you. But that's kind of a little outline of the process. Was there, at what point during that process did you go back to your, your wife in Grand Junction and said, honey, I think I got a shot here. I'm, yeah. I'm liking my chances. Yeah, so it was, um, I think it was when, when we came to Wenatchee. So that in the process of, of applying for and getting this position, I sort of came to Wenatchee twice and I brought my wife with me both times. The second time I brought a, a, a kid too. Um, and I think when we came, we we're like, oh, okay, like we like this. This is a pretty neat place. You know, we, this, this is, has the things we like about uh, a community, like the outdoor activities and, the, and the, the kind of people. And it's of a scale that's very comfortable and uh, um, and yes, it's a small town. You, you know, you'll see your neighbors at the at the grocery store, and I'm sure someone will stop me in the grocery store and tell me something they're unhappy about about Confluence Health at some point, which is fine, by the way. Go ahead and do it. Um, but it's just, it also is a sort of accountability to people in the community and to each other that I think is really really impactful. So I think kind of when the first time I came out here, I sort of thought, well, this is this is kind of moving from like the theoretical possibility to what might actually you know come to pass. You know? And it did come to pass. You have to. You have a unique balance. At, at what point? I mean, you have a you're, you have an MBA, and you have to you, you have to handle that part of the hospital, but at the and the entire Confluence Health, for that matter. Uh, and at the same time, you're also a medical doctor. Do you do you occasionally get the urge? That I want to get out of the office, put on my white smock, put a stethoscope on, mm -hmm. and do some rounds. How do you balance those yeah, two that, jobs? Those two parts of your job. That is always a tough decision for folks in medicine who decide to go into an administrative or leadership kind of role. Um, for many years, I did both. Um, so I did some patient care and some leadership work. Uh, I think that was true until, basically until COVID hit um, in my previous life. Uh, and then I had to sort of go full time into managing what COVID was going to be for, you know, where, where was the time. And, and you know, the, the same kinds of things happened everywhere in the States. So the same stories are true there as we're here, I think. Um, and I think that you know it, the the leadership work is very important. Uh, it's it you can make a big impact by helping all the caregivers work here and the physicians and everyone sort of build a better place to deliver patient care, build a better place to work, build a better uh, you know uh, company and a better resource for the community. So that's kind of my main job these days. I mean, I, you know, I am in the process of getting my license and all my medical license and all that, but I think I'm going to have primarily be focused on sort of the leadership role and leading other clinicians. This is, frankly speaking, one of the four or five highest profile jobs in all of North Central Washington. You probably knew that going in. Is that, um, you ready to tackle it? You're, you're going to, you're going to be the public face yeah. of, uh, of the Confluence Health uh, network of, of, of care. Right. That's, it's a big job, a huge responsibility, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, well, it's daunting, for sure. Uh, it's something I'm, I'm ready for and I look forward to. And it's, uh, I think, an exciting responsibility, uh, right? This is a chance to sort of help the people who work here and who are cared for here have the best possible experience, have the best possible outcomes, and uh, make this 
place you know even better than it already is and, and make something great for the community so it's an exciting opportunity and you know there will be days mm -hmm. i'm sure but uh, that's the nature of things i know a lot of physicians who work here i not i know a lot of uh, registered nurses who work here cnas who work here just basic employees uh, not only at central washington hospital but the entire family of confluence health um, almost to a person they really like working mm -hmm. for this organization that's that probably eases the burden a little bit for you doesn't it it, it does and i think that's was part of the, the draw of a place of this size and scale in the current healthcare world is at this scale we can build sort of a really humane and wonderful place to work uh, and the bigger you get the harder that can be to do not that the other you know great big health systems don't try to do that and do it well but i think this is there's a little more you know, accountability to the community. People can find this closer to their values. They sort of have find find more sort of personal meaning in a place like this than maybe at some other places. And I think that's, you know, people. It makes it easier for people and makes it more fulfilling for people when they find value in what they do. You know? A couple more questions, Dr. Jones, and we'll cut you loose. Um, is your initial job over the next, say, 16, 18 months, just kind of stay in your lane and find your way around, or? Do you have, you, have you already uh, noticed some things that maybe should demand your, a little bit more of your attention for the time being? Well, probably a little both. I think the first job for anyone coming into a role like this in a place like this is to sort of learn as much as they can about the organization and the place and the environment and you know all this sort of situation and to build relationships. So both inside the organization and in the community and you know frankly like you know there's people nationally involved in rural health that, that need to be, be have relationships. So building, so learning and building relationships is, is a key initial um, task. And also, you know, one of the reasons that I think I was brought in by the Confluence Board is to bring in someone with some outside eyes, right? This is a great organization and it's, uh, it's in an adolescent phase and that's good. And so I think there's an interest to know, okay, like, what do you see that we can no longer see because we are we are here, you know, we're doing this every day. What, what can you see that, that we don't see and where do we need to go next? So it's definitely a focus on, you know, understanding that and what might be some opportunities for growth for the organization uh, to move forward to the next, you know, next level. So. What's a good day for you? What's a good day? Yeah, a good day for me. Um, a good day for me uh, involves talking to people who are really jazzed about what they do. Uh, just this morning, I had a chance to talk to a few folks who are really jazzed about telemedicine, and, and, and it's just so fun to see people who get really geeked up on whatever they do and are really passionate about it and really want to make it better and are excited about it. And working in those sort of situations, uh, it becomes my job to break down barriers to help them do what they already know how to do. You know, it, it's my role to sort of pave the way. Um, and that can be with folks who work here or patients or whatever, but trying to being able to sort of take people who are passionate and doing work they value and trying to make a difference and help them do that. That's a good day for me. So. When you work in the healthcare industry, you have to be passionate or you're, you're going to be found out real quick like. I mean, yeah. you can't be cosmetic no. and do this job. Can no, you? yeah, it's, it, yeah, it'd be easier to, there's plenty of industries where it is all about sort of the transactions and the, and, you know, the, the money or, or whatever, and, and that's, and that's fine. That's that's perfectly legitimate thing to do. But healthcare is not like that. You have to really have a mission to take care of the patients and the people, and, and frankly, the community, um, to make a difference. And I think the folks here really do. I think that's why folks are at Confluence and folks are here in Wenatchee. Uh, you know, the doctors, the, all the staff, the caregivers, everybody. They really. It takes a whole team to make to make this work. Um, you know, the the people who clean the rooms and bring the food and keep the place you know, put together are are just as important to members of the care team as everybody else, and they're critically important to how we do things. So. Last question, we'll cut you loose, I know you're busy. When you got the call back in May, mm -hmm. um, the, the official job offer, was yeah. there any hesitation? Did you go, honey, I don't know, I like, or is it like, no. if, you get, if you're gonna be offered the yeah. job, you're taking it? Yeah, yeah, we, we knew if we, were, if, we got, if we got the offer, you know, we would be, we would be coming to Wenatchee. Uh, you know, there's all the various haggling about the, when you're going to start and all that sort of stuff, but we, yeah, we knew this was the right spot, so it was, it was pretty pretty easy. Yeah. And then a celebration dinner shortly thereafter, I'm assuming. Exactly, yeah, so. exactly. So. Well, welcome to the Valley. Uh, I'm looking forward to meeting your wife. I understand she works in nonprofits and is going to be, you're going to be involved in the community in any number of ways, I'm sure. The various service clubs and boards will be mm -hmm. knocking on your door. Yeah. That's uh, part and parcel of it. 
and uh, the kids will like uh, going to school here, and I think uh, you're going to like it here. Uh, I, I think so, too. It's a great place. Yep. Uh, best of luck. Anytime you need, uh, you need help from us, doctor, you know where to find me. I have the highest rated local morning television show in town. Well, that's, that's pretty impressive, and I appreciate it. Yeah, I have the only local. Well, hey, that, that's unnecessary clarification. <laughs> <laughs> and you and I have something in common. You went through Yale. I did. And I do. I went through Yale. You went through Yale. You got a degree. I went through Yale, and it was in the back seat of a patrol car. So oh, well, it didn't yeah. count. Yeah. So yeah. Thanks, for, yeah, th thanks for visiting. We appreciate right. it. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley. We'll be right back. The Clearwater Saloon and Casino has the best Vegas-style games in East Wenatchee. Come enjoy yourself and discover the nightly action. Win big and meet new friends at the Clearwater Saloon and Casino. At DA Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. D.A. Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. Flowers are fighters. That's why the Alzheimer's Association Walk to End Alzheimer's is full of them. Because flowers find a way to break through, just like we will. Join the fight at alz.org slash walk. Wednesday because yeah, it's Wednesday. Uh, you want to go golfing? You just want to go to Desert Canyon and have some fun. This is a hundred and fifty dollar gift card, one five zero, from our friends at Desert Canyon up there in Orlando. You can use their and go out and do their putt putt course, which is a lot of fun, really cool. Or you can use it for golf, or merchandise, or in the restaurant. It's a hundred and fifty dollar gift card, and it's as good as cash. At Desert Canyon, email me, winner at ncwlife.com, winner at ncwlife.com. That's email address. That's the only way you can enter the contest. Winner at ncwlife.com. We will do the drawing a little bit later on during the day. Red flag warning is going to get going here in just a couple of minutes. 8 o'clock this morning goes all the way till 10 o'clock tonight. It is the, the recipe for red flag warning. And I'm talking really low relative humidity. We're talking bone dry humidity as this cold, dry front comes in. Uh, we're still going to be warm, and we're going to have a lot of wind this afternoon. I mean a lot of wind this afternoon, and that means blowing dust, especially along the Highway 2 corridor, up in Waterville Plateau, any place where the soil is loose and not really holding on to the planet, it will blow the dust around this afternoon and this evening with the strongest winds, basically between about 4 o'clock this afternoon till about 8.30 tonight from the National Weather Service. Windy. High of 87. We hit 86 yesterday, 54 for the overnight low tonight. Still a little bit of wind, but it's, this is a cold front. Uh, it's a dry cold front that's coming in, so look how much cooler we're going to get for the afternoon high on Thursday and Friday before we start the warming process up just in time for the weekend. But the overnight lows are going to start making it feel like autumn. And that's it for us. Have yourself a fantabulous Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>